everybody, Luxinda Swirl here, New Day, New Cup Project. On my other channel, which is not Tumblr oriented, it's it's a million other things, but no tumblers. I did this recently to show that the, the transfer foil that I have so much trouble with trying to get on a cup, here would be two examples. I mean, this one turned out fine. This one turned out okay. This was just sort of a, a gag anyway. So yeah, but I struggle a lot. If you saw the, the Tumblr video where I made this, you, you know I struggled a lot. I will link to that below. But I have had really good luck with the same foil in other situations that aren't specifically Tumblr related. And if you want to see how I did this, I will link to the other channel. Please feel free to, to subscribe while you're over there. But I did this. This is a gel print background with a black and white laser print graphic and then the transfer foils on top. And I'm going to use this exact same principle today, but instead of just having a piece of paper when I'm done, I will have a tumbler. And in fact, we're going to do two tumblers because I want to try this two different ways. This particular foil transfer method requires the laser printer image. It requires the laser toner specifically and heat. So we're not working with adhesive, we're working with heat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate something similar to this, but I'm going to do it on two different pieces of printable vinyl sticker paper. This is not the Neato brand. This is a, a flat matte surface that I think might pick up the images a little better. So I'm going with this today. This is Joyeza, available on Amazon. I will link to everything below. And I have two pieces of it because like I say, we're gonna do two tumblers and I'm gonna try two different methods for getting this or something very similar to this on each tumbler. We're going to recreate that image on these two pieces and then I'm going to use one with my laminator which is how I got this and I'm going to use the other one with my tumbler press which also provides pressure and heat just like the laminator does except the laminator works on a flat surface and the tumbler press works on a cylindrical surface and we will see what the outcome is and how they compare to each other. So hopefully that made some sense. If it, if it didn't, it will all become clear when I actually start doing something which we'll get to right now. So here we go. This is my gel plate. It is a gel press brand gel plate. There are other brands available. They're all virtually the same thing and they can be found on Amazon. Again, links to everything down in the description area, which is underneath the title of the video. Sometimes you have to click on a little down arrow or the words read more or show more, but it's there and I usually list everything from each video down in that description area. So I'm going to take off this top piece of acetate and leave the bottom piece underneath. This last time I used two different ink pads. You can use all sorts of different things. One of the fun things, one of the many fun things we're going to do on the other channel is play around with a whole bunch of different colorants on a gel plate just to see what we get. But one thing that works great is ink stamp pads. And in this case, I used two different ones and sort of blended them together. For this particular test, we're just going to use one. Those were Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Oxide stamp pads. This is a different stamp pad from Catherine Pooler Designs called All That Jazz. It doesn't matter. Whatever ink pad you have on hand will work fine. I'm just going to ink up my gel plate. like that. Then we're going to take our first piece of printable vinyl and we are going to place it hopefully down here and get a nice print. We'll see. I can use the brayer for this. I want to make sure the, the printable vinyl, all of it comes in contact with all of the ink that's on the gel plate. This is just going to form a background. We'll pull it off and see what we got. That took some energy. That is that is cool. I kind of like that. All right, we're going to put this aside to dry and we're going to do it all over again with the other piece of printable vinyl. So there we go. Looks fine. And we will move on to the next step, which will be printing our Beatles images onto these pieces of printable vinyl. So here's what's on the screen. And here's what I'm feeding through the printer. And we're back. Okay, so I just did this and I showed you all how to do it. And when I was done, I went to turn the camera off and it was already off because I hadn't actually shown you anything because I'm a moron. <laughs> 
we'll consider this a rehearsal. So luckily I have some extra prints and this one I won't probably be using for the cup, but I will be using now when the camera is on to demonstrate how I did this. Anybody here who's seen the other channel already knows this, but for all of you who haven't, we are going to do it here with the camera on this time. I have print that was an ink background and laser printed Beatles graphic, and I'm putting it in a folded over piece of parchment paper, and I am putting some of this groovy kaleidoscope foil over the graphic area. It needs to be over everything that's been laser printed and not come out of the, the edges of the um, parchment paper. Okay, and then I have my very simple, very basic Walmart purchased Scotch brand laminator set on a three millimeter thickness because we don't need anything thicker. This doesn't even have lamination plastic in it, so it's very thin already. And I'm just going to send the whole thing down the chute. The folded edge goes in first, the open edge is at the back. Okay, turn the laminator off, put it off to the side, let it cool, and then we will open our packet up. You're supposed to wait until the foil is cool, and honestly, this doesn't hold heat very long because it's just, it's just paper. So we'll open up our parchment paper, and then we will peel back our foil. And there they are, ladies and gentlemen, the groovy kaleidoscope beetles. Isn't that beautiful? So it's just heat and pressure on the transfer foil. This is the same foil I used on the other cup, the Daisy cup. Okay, this is the exact same foil I used on this cup. Different pattern, that's the only difference, same foil. And we got that. And I'm going to pick the better of the two, which I still think is this one and I'm going to wrap this on a tumbler. So that will be method number one for getting this foil with this graphic onto a tumbler. So I have another one of these graphics. We are gonna put this on another tumbler and then see if we can get the same effect using the heat and the pressure of the tumbler press to infuse the groovy kaleidoscope pattern onto our Fab Four. So I'm gonna bring the tumblers in, we will wrap them next, and then we'll go to the tumbler press for the last bit and see what happens. All right, time to do a little vinyl trimming. So the beetles are going that way because that's where the opening is now, and this side goes on first. Start by peeling back a little bit and just cutting a little bit off. Take it, close enough. It is, it is too long, but I will be trimming it. So here's how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna keep pulling this back and using my soft edged tool to keep out any bubbles or wrinkles. Okay. Yay. Mother of Pearl. I get out my cup edger, my trimming tool. I am going to put this up against the razor blade push the cup against the razor blade as I'm turning the cup. I'm gonna start at the seam so I know when I've gone all the way around. But here we go, hopefully. And then if that worked right, we should be able 
to just there we go that's what i'm talking about yeah, almost <laughs> almost All right, there be the top. Now we do it again on the bottom. Almost perfect. I have one little extra slice here. Yay! And there was much rejoicing in the land. Okay, there they are, ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. Out here in front of the hotel, and they're handsome as ever. Okay, one cup done. Obviously it needs resin, but one cup done up to this point. Now I'm gonna whip through this part because you're not gonna have to watch me do that again. Oh my God. But the difference will be that this time there will be no foil on the graphic yet. Okay. Yeehaw! Now, I'm gonna meet you out at the tumbler press and we're gonna do the foiling part with the tumbler press versus the laminator. We are in my kitchen with the tumbler press. I have taken the cup we just wrapped with the graphic. I have wrapped it in the groovy kaleidoscope foil and I have used one piece of heat tape just to hold the foil in place. And now I'm going to wrap it in parchment paper just like when we put it through the laminator. All right, so now I need to set my machine again. I'm gonna turn it on. Yes, all right, relax. Okay, Fahrenheit, and I need mode so we can set it. It's at 210 and I'm gonna increase it to about 290. Close enough, 289, all right? And then I'm gonna change the time a little lower. Come on, okay. Okay, here we go. Tumbler in the middle. And press. Okay, now I'll turn it 180 degrees. Make sure everything's been heated. And press it. Press again. There we go. All right. All right, I'll bring you back when it's cool and we will take a test peek. And we're back. Okay, this is cooled off. We're gonna unwrap it. Yeehaw! Look at that. That is not nearly as bad as I was thinking it might be. Here, let me, let me do it this way so you can hopefully see the whole thing. The only problems I see are the, there were a few wrinkles in the hair here, um, but none of the other Fab Four. You know, I guess John's missing a tiny spot there and there. But honestly, that looks pretty damn good. I'm very pleased with how both of these have turned out. Couple flaws, but otherwise spectacular, as the Beatles always are. All right, so now it's time to get a layer of resin on each one, and then we'll do a final comparison. And we're back. Okay, both our Beatles cups have resin on them. They both look absolutely gorgeous. 
I am so happy with how these turned out. Do I have a preference? Well, let me tell you right off the bat that I can tell the difference between the two only because of specific markers that happened during both processes. For example, the most notable one is on this cup here. Because this was done in the tumbler press and there's a seam here where there's an overlap, no foil was actually picked up on this little single strip of laser toner right here. Because it was pressed in the tumbler press, that did not happen on this one here because this foiling job was done on a flat surface before I wrapped it around the cup. The seam made no difference whatsoever. So in terms of ease, I would have to say that for me, both require a full cup wrap with the vinyl. So that part happens no matter what. In one case, the vinyl is still flat and it goes through the laminator and then it's wrapped on. In the other case, the vinyl is wrapped on and then it gets put into the tumbler press instead of the laminator. That part, you know, neither one of them is particularly difficult. They both have, I suppose, their own little challenges, but in all honesty, I would say the one with the laminator may be a little easier just because everything happens to the vinyl first and then the last thing you have to do is wrap it on and put resin on it and you're done versus the one that goes in the tumbler press. You wrap the vinyl on and then you still have to wrap the foil on and wrap the parchment paper on and put it in the press and turn it and check it and turn it again, blah, blah, blah. So in this case, the tumbler press is probably more difficult, it takes a few more steps, but either one works. They both work. I ended up with two absolutely fantastic cups featuring my favorite band in the universe. And I, I love these cups. I love these cups so much. <laughs> this just makes me so happy. Anything with the Beatles on it makes me happy. What can I say? So, not going out in the sunshine. There isn't any. I address this in a different video. Yeah, I'm not going to risk life and limb to go out in the ice and snow on the back deck in the hopes of a nice sunshine shot. Just not going to do it. Uh, I apologize. These just won't look as pretty. There's no amount of lighting I can do inside that will match the sun. The Beatles! Woo! Cue the screaming fans. Thanks everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.